Hello, my name is Tom Atkinson. Um, I am run GBCs all over the country and uh, today we're going to try something a little different. We're going to try to run through this GB GBC with the whole thing turned off and we're going to try to show some how some of the mechanisms are work and uh, maybe some underneath some of the modules and and see what we can learn and and hopefully this will be a little different than previous videos. I think it's going to be a little different already. So um, we'll start right here with this one which is this is a new module uh, and uh, I will turn it on to show how it works, but I'm going to turn it around because it's interesting to see the mechanism on this side. Um, and the, the balls roll in and this, this thing sliding up and down at a funky angle is definitely something I've never seen before. So it works pretty well. Uh, it, I think uh, it only fell apart once that I saw the whole day. Um, this is the end of our first day here, so um, I am a little tired too. Which is actually partially why we decided to do this differently, to see if we can get through this without having to fire the whole thing up again. All right, so we'll, we'll move on now. Um, the, I'll turn this one off and put it back so that I don't get yelled at in the morning. Uh, the, the next module is one that, that's uh, been around for a little while. It's, it's one of the, the few that runs on uh, an, uh, NXT. It's got an NXT underneath in the front here uh, with a couple of motors and sensors to to keep the thing going and it does flip the balls up one section at a time uh it's it's a very it's a very powerful gbc in that it, it actually has broken you can see there's a broken part here uh and the, the same parts broken over here um it was here that it got broken and we swapped it around her just to keep things going um not today but this has happened before uh this is uh pretty reliable module other than the, the fact that it's chewed up a few parts um, let, let's move on because so, we've seen this one before and we've seen this one before uh, this one is cool because it spins around and this is one of the things we can do now that we ordinarily can't do this is a big disc as you can look down and see inside that it's a there's a spiral inside and that's how the balls get up and around so and this sits on top of tires that spin uh, it works pretty well the one downside of this is you see all the tire crud that it's creating there uh, but that's you know, that's what happens with GBC we wear things out <laughs> uh, the next module is one that is uh, I guess the the idea came from one that uses the octopus rotating that, that um, somebody had done online and the builder of this saw that concept and made his own with brick built. Um, I don't think this module had a problem at all today. Uh, ran pretty well. It's pretty colorful, so pretty neat. Uh, here's another module that uh, has been around for a number of years. Uh, it has some flip-flops in it, so the balls can come down and flip back and forth first it'll go one direction then it'll go the other and it goes through two sets of these to go down four different paths uh, eventually it gets down and comes out and all the paths join and comes out and goes on to the next module um, which is a new one uh, this is a simple conveyor but done in a interesting color scheme uh, and it's very pretty using the tan and dark tan it seemed to work pretty well this this weekend is or so far anyway i'm trying to think what is yeah that's pretty simple so from from here we move on to this uh module which is a, a conveyor and it feeds and again he makes use of kind of a little bit of randomness as to where the balls will run uh he's got a couple of different paths here um to make it you know interesting uh, and one of them has a loop-de-loop -loop in it which is you know anytime you can make a ball do a loop-de-loop -loop, that's cool so uh, and he's also gonna made it very colorful so you know kids will spot this colors from across the room uh, and, it, and has decorated it, it so that it's it's interesting to them too so um, from there we can move on to uh, so modules that have been around for a while. This is uh, Brian Bonahum's module, which is he's been slowly making improvements to over the years, um, and it, it's been fairly reliable. Um, it does have an issue with some gears sliding here, but 
he knows that, so next time it will be improved. So uh, from there we go on to uh, another one of Brian's modules, which has had uh, uh, some improvements made over the years. This, this module's actually been around for a number of years uh, and has he's made improvements on it. And now, of course, it's got a ball jammed behind it, but, you know, that happens. Um, and the, the cool part about this is it's a, it's a brick-built chain, basically. Uh, and then from there, the, it comes down the backside of the module uh, to this interesting zigzag to, to, to drop down the energy of the ball. Because if that just went straight down, it would come down way too fast. So This module is uh, also... Uh, one of Brian's modules. I, its original module is, is probably older than any other module on the table, uh, and but he's been improving it over the years. And let me show you how it works here. How do you like that sound, huh? Okay, so it's not supposed to sound like that. Okay, so, so that sounds like it's in perfect working condition. <laughs> After this interview, I think we're going to get him over here and, uh, and, and show him this. And the cool thing about this, I'm not sure I can demonstrate. Um, so well, what's supposed to happen is that if it gets stalled out or jammed or whatever, the torque is supposed to flip the switch over and reverse it. Um, I think I'm going to shut that off. That's kind of scaring me. <laughs> um, he ha <laughs> Interestingly, he had, part of how this works is it, needed, it needs a flywheel. So he had this on as a flywheel, and he tested the bejesus out of it at home, not on, not on terry cloth. Uh, and when he first started using it, it left a skid mark because it was right there. So he ended up having to pull that off um, to make it work on the terry cloth. <laughs> but uh, this is a, a two-stepper, um, big, fat, wide steps, moves nice and slow. We can just turn on for a second so you can see how it works. So it's not uh, anything too fascinating, although we can take a look at the bottom. I think we'll be able to see what's going on here. We get balls all over the place, but... Um, and one of the things that's, that's interesting about this is that, as you can see, each one of the things that's going up and down is driven by two different, is driven on both sides by two sets of gears. Uh, and that, that keeps the thing nice and stable as it's being pushed up and down. Um, I've made several of these kind of steppers where you're just pushing in the middle and it, and it has a tendency to catch. Uh, where this design, where it's pushing in in two places in parallel works way better so um, from there we move on to uh, a simple conveyor which is this is a new GBC builder so it's always good to get a new builder in here and as far as I know this module ran fine all day so there's nothing better than having a new GBC builder come bring a module and have it work great all day doesn't happen often um, after that, we have a, a small pile of the Brickworld workshop modules from uh, 2015. Uh, we have nine modules here, all stacked up. Um, in, <laughs> interestingly enough, at Brickworld, we had 55 of these stacked up, and it ran fine for two days, fortunately. This one, this pink module, which is the bottom one, broke like eight times today <laughs> we had to take the whole thing apart to get down to it it's not a good not fun hopefully it'll be better this tomorrow uh from there we have a an old sweeper module that's uh, originally a philo design that's uh an old standard uh after that we move on to my shooter uh which has given me a hard time today and you must note the bonus brick up here that uh that was a brick that Brian had on his badge at the last convention him and I were at. And he chose to put it on here. And I think it's very appropriate because, yes, it was annoying me. Um, and, it, and actually, we can probably show a little bit about this. I know a lot of people ask me, how does this thing shoot balls? Because it does. I'm not sure you can see, but I'm going to pull apart out here. So one of the things that happens here, 
see, I can fire this up. Um, one of the things that happens here is the balls have to drop in at the right time. So, oh, that's not good. This, the balls roll here, and, and this mechanism here, uh, which is the, the faulty part of this thing currently, uh, will drop the balls in after the previous ball shot. Mm -hmm. Getting two balls in there, bad. And that happens because this mechanism needs improving. Uh, but if you get in there carefully, you can kind of see what's going on in there. And I'm pretty sure the is totally blowing away your audio. <laughs> so we set it off. Can you, can you pick up that? What's going on in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. You guys getting to see. Yeah, that's really neat. Thanks for showing us the inside there. <laughs> I've had a hundreds of public ask me over the years, how's that work? And nobody's got to see it. You guys are special. Um, okay, we'll leave this like this and we can move on. I can fix that later. Uh, from here we come to a module which I would be happy to get rid of. I, I made this from the first year's uh, workshop, uh, Brick World workshop module the same set of parts is used to make this module um, and because I was just very limited in the parts it's really not well made <laughs> so but it works for the most part um, so we'll move on on that one and hopefully you won't see that one anymore uh, this module now this was a design that was somebody did online I, I don't recall who it was uh, but the mechanism is is pretty neat, uh, and, and let me load it up a handful of balls here so you can see what it what, what it does. Um, so first, it it lines it up and gives you a batch of five, and uh, loads them onto the arm, which then goes on and dumps them onto the next module. And uh, the gears, I'll run this really slow so you guys can see what's going on there. Um, the, the gears of this is just amazing to watch. Uh, and this, this module's new, and it, I only saw one having one problem today. Just a couple parts popped off, and they just had to go back on, and it was working again. So it worked pretty well. But it definitely has an interesting motion. So. Uh, from there, uh, we go into... Uh, um, uh, lifting platform module that I've had for a number of years. Not very interesting, well, to me anyway. Uh, it just has a platform that moves up and down and uh, the input and output kind of just follow it. Um, and it, it's starting to get loose and loosey-goosey so it, it's not working as well as it used to when it was brand new. So from there we move on to a module which... Um, the, the builder is new to GBC. Uh, he has, this I think is his, his third attempt at making this thing work. Um, and he brought it over last night. And this morning, um, somebody that was spent the whole day in here um, worked on it and got the thing working well uh, by replacing a bunch of gears, changing the gear ratios on things. And uh, I'll show you how it works. It, uh, Basically flips the balls up one at a time, um, and and it seen, it ran pretty well for most of the day. Once it got on the table, I don't think it's been touched since. Uh, so it's it works pretty well. It's got a whole ton of gears back here that are that are all driven by one motor. You can see them from this view, um, <clears throat> and that that was the the real issue here was such a long gear chain with enough of a load that. You know, it wouldn't take much to, to stall the motor, and especially after a couple hours of running. So, but it worked pretty well today. So, from there we move on to my, what I've been calling uh, my mesmerizing GBC. This is the one I keep telling people don't look at it too long. And I even had a, a little kid come up to me today. He goes, oh yeah, that's the one you're not supposed to look at too long. <laughs> I thought the message is getting out there. <laughs> the message has gotten out there. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, so from there, we, we got to, we have a, this is a new module. We have a platform that, that goes back and forth slowly um, and we'll lift the balls up on either end. This it works better when it goes fast. 
Um, it's a little different, and I, and I do like the color scheme, you know, orange and gray. Not something you see often. So uh, from there, we move on to uh, this is Jeremy Moody's binomial distribution module, uh, which the balls drop down, and because they have this whole Plinko effect thing going on here, they, they create a binomial distribution of balls, and it, it goes for you know, 90 or 100 seconds and lets balls collect and make a bell curve, and then it dumps them all. And because there's so many balls getting dumped, he recirculates half of them. So uh, pretty neat module, and, and people love to gather in front of it and watch it do the big dump. So it's entertaining. Um, and then he has this. One might consider this a separate module, although we can't because this thing dumps out so many balls, it exceeds the spec. So he had to build a special module to take that big blob of balls and spit them out again at a slower rate. Uh, or at a rate that the next module could handle. So um, this as a whole is one module. Uh, from there we go into um, a module that's been around for a while uh, that slowly moves balls down parallel and then a little faster and then up this uh, Technic built chain with square gears. From there we go to a very colorful module that is basically a simple conveyor uh, and half the balls will recirculate by coming down this spiral. Uh, and, and when they choose to come down this spiral, they go on to the next module, uh, which in this case is the train. And I know you've seen the train before, so we'll move on. <laughs> Let's take the track around the corner here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and now we, we get into, I think, well, it's going to be a while before we see anything new, so we can speed it up a bit. This is a train dumping station, which you've seen before. This is a pneumatic module. And actually, now we can pick this one up and I can show you some of the things about it. Because usually, wait, all you see is a blur with that thing because that's the compressor. And I'll run, I'll run it really slowly. So what it's doing is making compressed air, which it feeds into this line, which runs down the length of the thing and feeds in a lot of different places. But the real, the key to this is the fact that there are places where I have um, pneumatic pistons flipping pneumatic switches. And in parallel to this pneumatic piston is another pneumatic piston, which is flipping up a bucket or opening the mechanism to drop balls into the bucket. Um, so it's a series of, it's, it's really a logical thing where one flips and then it allows the next to flip and then the next to flip and it just circulates flipping the bucket, flipping the bucket, letting more balls in, and just goes around in a circle, all run off of this compressor. So, um, after that, we go into um, a module of mine where I completely stole the brick-built idea of conveyor and the square gears. Uh, and this thing, kind of an accidental thing, which is still an issue, is it, um, it kind of bumps, which keeps the balls from jamming, but also means the balls shake off. So this module leaks a bit, but it's okay. Um, from there we go across the bridge, which has been seen before. This is a, a stepper that gets up to here. Um, I, one thing that probably haven't seen is the bridge opening. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, so this bridge was designed to be able to handle a train. Uh, not a 9-volt train, but a power function or NXT-driven type train. Uh, and the, the train that I designed for this had um, <coughs> the uh, uh, ultrasonic sensors on both ends of it. And so when you push the button to open the bridge, the first thing that happens is this red flag comes out. And the ultrasonic sensor on the front of the train would see that and stop. So that the train won't go flying off the bridge. Um, <coughs> And once they both flip open, then the bridge opens. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave it. We'll leave it open for the rest of the day. Uh, um, so the, the, this was kind of a fun thing to play around with uh, and getting it all to work and Bluetooth between the two sides and so on and so forth. And mm -hmm. I learned a lot about how to make Bluetooth work and, and its weaknesses with the NXT. It does have a fair number. <laughs> Uh, at any rate, um, we'll move on. From there, we go to a, a counter, which is based using two NXTs, 
um, and it has a NXT motor for each digit so that I can pre-program a number or save and restore a number. Um, it's pretty useful uh, if you want to keep a count for the whole weekend, but you want to power everything off, save the number, power things down, come back tomorrow and restore where you were started with. Um, the, the, I don't think there's anything. The, the one weird thing I want to talk about after my experiences with the bridge and all the problems with communicating between two NXTs, um, I tried other ways to get two NXTs to talk to each other. And on this one, <laughs> what I finally made work well was two light sensors, one blinking the light and the other measuring the blinks. And fortunately, it's the communication that I needed between the two NXTs was very minimal. So it was one direction and there were only three possible messages. So the, the one blink, two blink, or three blink was enough communications and it's rock solid, way better than Bluetooth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that. From there, uh, we're going to simple up and down, um, which is one piece that goes up and down, pumps the balls on. Uh, into this module which basically has a big ramp that lifts up and down slowly and allows the balls to go into the balldozer field. The balldozer field, <coughs> this is going to be hard, <laughs> uh, so somebody can remote, remote control drive this and I think it's turned off now, can push the balls into the corner and once they're in the corner a uh, ball pump will pump them on to the next module. Um, this was uh, uh, very popular today. I had a ton of kids. I had issues trying to keep kids in line and everything because they all wanted to turn driving the balldozer around. Um, <clears throat> this, this particular uh, unit it was originally built by Bill Bourne, who has since passed. Uh, I'm now responsible for it. I'm going to maintain it, update it, and keep the thing going because it's a very popular thing and it's, it's just an awesome thing. And, and to me, this, is the, this represents B Bill Bourne's part of GBC. I mean, he did a lot of other things, but this is the epitome of what Bill did. So, <clears throat> um, moving on, we, we go into um, a module that uh, is made up of an uh, inverted circle of the larger conveyor that, that brings the balls up on the inside and drops them out one at a time. Now we've seen that one before. Uh, <clears throat> one of the... Yeah, all right. So the next one is a flipper that flips them up. You know, five little flippers. And I know uh, there was a, a time that um, uh, Brian Bonahum, uh, who runs all the Brick Worlds, was giving me a hard time for not using the brick world colors. I have to say in my defense that I just randomly chose colors and that if I miss the brick world colors by that much, I don't know, maybe someday I'll fix it. I don't know, depends. <laughs> From there, we move into a, a very simple module. This is as small a module as you can have because it's the size of the input pin. So real quick, so when you say module, there is kind of a standard that you you have to have a certain size and there has to be a certain way that it's built to, to be a official GBC module. Right. Uh, 10 by 10 and 10 bricks tall. Okay. And it has to be your input pin. It can't be smaller than that. So this is the smallest module you can make. <clears throat> um, I can also take two of these, and I have another one somewhere around, and put them back to back so the balls feed from one to the other back and forth and now you have the smallest complete loop you can make <laughs> it's pretty silly though <clears throat> from there we move to a simple conveyor which dumps the balls into a long ramp and we'll skip ahead now um, <clears throat> we from there we go to my uh, ferris wheel uh, which has you know been solely improved over the years uh, it had a couple issues with it today. Something was getting out of sync. And one of the things uh, that I can show you guys now, oh, it's full of balls. Maybe I can't. Well, at any rate, um, so I can explain this a little bit. There's a motor under here that drives the stepper part of this that loads the balls on. And there's another motor here that 
drives the actual wheel. And in between, they're, they're attached through a series of gears and axles, and in between there's a, a differential. And so in the back here, I have a wheel that slowly turns a differential that allows me to adjust the phase between the two so that I can precisely drop the ball right into the, the little cubby. Um, and that, it's that flexibility that makes this work because otherwise it would constantly be out of sync. So. <clears throat> um, move on to uh, my pusher, which has been around quite a while. Um, I do want to show this is the first time that one of these new eight tooth gears that I've really beat the crap wow. out of. Um, but it still works, but by the end of this weekend, I think I'm going to have to replace this gear. But, I mean, I've, this thing has worn out regular eight-tooth gears for years. I th was hoping that the new ones would uh, be a little tougher, but I, apparently not. <laughs> so, um, from there we can go, oh, here's the other little gray module. So, um, very useful for filling in little spaces. After that, we go into a module which is a, a simple conveyor, yet highly decorated. And, and this is the kind of thing I want to see more of, is, is modules that are entertaining to look at beyond just their mechanical properties. Uh, and in this one, I definitely fits that bill. Um, nice color scheme, nice theme. Um, from there, we go on to Mr. Hassenplug's interpretation of Akiyuki's picker. Uh, which is one of the coolest mechanisms ever uh, in how it works. And this is one of those things I can stop and take an arm off and show you how it works. So these things go up and down. And when it goes down, it, it goes down and lands on top of the ball and picks it up, if I can hit it. Uh, and then once it gets pulled up and back, this wheel hits something and it drops the ball. And, th and that's how this works. It goes down and back and forth. Um, and with four of them flying at once, this thing can get rid of 100 balls pretty quickly. So, and other than that, it's, it's another module which has been highly decorated. So, which is, uh, which is good. He's, it's currently pretty decorated with soccer balls right now, but we'll fix that. <laughs> From there, we move on to a, a, a new module. Um, this one has, needs a little work still. It's, it's, he does not have very many hours on it, so he's only just gotten to see the problems with it. Um, I think the concept is great. He needs to work on his gear train to make it a little more stable. You see how I just pushed that together? Um, the gears kept popping off today. Uh, but let me show you how it runs. Uh, this just goes around and scoops up balls a little bit at a time and pushes them up the track. And I don't know whether you can really see, but what's underneath that is the is the skinny track, train track. So, see, and again, this is this is what we had was the like, gears were slipping. So I, I love the idea of it, uh, and he used to solidify his gear train, and, and this will be an awesome module. So, um, yeah, we'll give this one more pile of balls through set it off and uh when this module was first put on the table these were not on there i don't, I don't know when those showed up but you know little decoration <laughs> yeah it looks good so from there we go on to uh this is an, a, a a philo design that uh this is a one of my old standby fill-in modules that i use when other modules have to, to come off the table which we had a lot of in the last day last night uh that feeds into a pump and this pump basically just pushes the balls down this ramp. Uh, and then this thing is really, <laughs> doesn't really do much with the actual ball, except this guy spinning around does, does hit the ball every once in a while and knock it further along. But holy cow, is it entertaining to watch. There is, there is, there's, a, there's a lot of things moving around. Let's see if I can get it to run really slow. There you go. A lot of things moving around. Uh, great use of old Samsonite gears. Uh, I those gears are I love them. They're rock solid and they're big. So you know from a distance you can see that it's a gear. You can see what it's doing. 
Um, he's got a lot of things spinning around and all that, so on and so forth. So this is definitely an entertaining module. Yeah, it is really cool. And those gears are pretty cool. How, how, what era was that from? And what years were those made? Um, I'm not sure of the exact years, but it was definitely late 60s, early yeah. 70s kind of thing. Um, the, those gears, as I understand it, uh, was one of the reasons that Lego finally told Samsonite, go away, we don't want you to make our stuff anymore. And they came into this country. Uh, because Samsonite went off and did that on their own. And, uh, and Lego didn't like that. that. That's as I understand it. Now, somebody correct me if I don't have that right. So uh, from there, we go on to uh, another simple stepper that just has a single step, pumps balls into the next module. Uh, and this module has some something that flips the balls up uh, and kind of drags them across top of a couple of beams to roll into the next module, which is a very similar kind of design. I'm not sure it's exactly the same, but it's the same concept. Uh, different color scheme, different look to it, but it, same mechanism. Which then moves into um, the next module, which is uh, my popper module, which is a series of little tiny uh, launching mechanisms, very much like the big popper, uh, and we can look at that. I don't know if you can see if you see in there. I'll turn this on really slowly. And this is definitely going backwards. I don't know why. That's odd. <clears throat> um, but the there's if you if you get way down in there, you can probably see the whole thing. There's a beam that I mean, there's a lift arm that spins around and pulls down on the red beam which is sprung and it slips off it and does a little so um, the interesting thing about this module is that it has the ability to adjust the phase between each of the poppers so that I can get them all to launch at the same time I can tweak it a little bit and also the ability to adjust the tension of the springs so I can adjust the height that they jump um, while all that flexibility is really neat, that's more stuff that wears out. So uh, this module needs a little, some part replacement. It, it does get a little wonky sometimes. Um, it seemed to work fine today, which kind of surprised me, <laughs> to be honest with you. All right, so from there we move on. This module drops and goes down a wiggly ramp. Another, similar to Brian's, from way across the other side of the table, uh, had this just been straight, the ball would have come down too fast. So this wiggly stuff really slows the balls down and presents it to the next module at a reasonable speed. Um, this next module is a, a series of these uh, treads that are that, that basically squeeze the ball between them and push them up. Um, the The tricky part about this was getting it to pass from one to the other. And what, what he basically did was make a, a channel in there so that only one bottle ball can fit in there, ball width. Uh, so he waits until another ball comes along and, and pushes, pushes the one in there. So the next ball will come along and push this one and will pop that one up to the next. So it, this worked fairly well all day, as far as I know. So it's a good thing. Um, from here we go into, this is a new module, I think. This is its second show, um, and it, it's pretty amazing in that it uses the, the Mars flex tube, uh, which I guess there there's two types of this tubing and the two types of these connectors, where I, I don't remember whether it's the newer or the older where the ball actually fits through. The other one, it does not, so be careful if that's what you're pursuing. Um, one of the interesting things about this that I have yet to see in a module is the use of these flexible axles from Snap. And uh, I don't, I, you know, there are not very many of those around, and uh, I've never seen anybody use them in a in a GBC module before. And he's using two of them: one here at a at a pretty subtle angle, and then one over here where he's got it running all the way around and you know tighter than 90 degrees. Uh, and it does a pretty good job of, you know, passing that rotation 
and I'll run this really slowly so you can see. So it's pretty neat. He had a few issues with this, but for the most part, I think it worked out okay today. It's uh, definitely a different module and it's cool looking, big <laughs> thing flipping over, so. It is really neat. And so I, I know you mentioned some of the, the non-Lego parts there. Is that something that you personally, is, oh, that, that is Lego? Okay, that is, okay, right, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's before you guys' time, but <laughs> so yeah. I wasn't familiar with that then. <laughs> it's ZNAP. Okay. Have you seen that? I don't know Z Z N A P. Okay. It was uh, stuff they had in the mid '90s. Uh, it was out for a few years, and it was really this softer plastic stuff. Um, some aspects of it kind of similar to Connects, uh, how the connect, how the connections work and stuff, but compatible with Technic. And, and as far as I'm concerned, this was one of the coolest parts that came out of it was this flexible axle. Uh, and I wish I had more of them. I, I own two of those at my house and you know, I actually had a mock that actually used one a long time ago. Uh, and it was a, a neat thing and, and sometimes it's the perfect solution to, to a problem. Uh, it, like this, he has a strange angle and driving at two ends a strange angle uh, is difficult, so this was a good solution to it. Okay, well there you go. I learned something new that I didn't realize that. Very, very neat. <laughs> um, after that, we go into a, there's another new module here, which is a mechanical counter, uh, which is uh, very clever. Uh, the, the mechanism that, that flips one, you know, that has one, that takes, when you flip to the next digit, uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to get enough balls to... I can cheat here. Um, I can cheat by doing it here. If you if you get a shot in here, as 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 this goes around and counts up, right? This hammer part, hammer looking thing, comes around and eventually flips the next one just once, and that's how you get the decades every decade and it works its way up. So. It's, I would trust the count on this counter before I trust the count on mine because this is mechanical mm -hmm. uh, and it's not likely to make an error. So, um, and as far as I know, this worked fine all day too. So, from there we go to a module which is basically a combination of a ball pump and then also a stepper which uh, effectively just moves the balls across. Uh, it's kind of an interesting interesting look to it um, so it's kind of it's kind of cool to watch the balls move across and then you know in unison uh, and you get a good shot of what's happening underneath um, you can see that it's basically a big crankshaft <laughs> you know the other, the other uh, thing that's a little different about this module is the way the ball pump works um, this this right here is those angled lift arms are uh, what's actually pumping the ball up. Uh, it does have a tendency to want to push this whole top off. So that was one of the issues he had with this, and I, I'm sure he's going to try to do something to improve it. Um, but I, I think for the most part, it worked okay today. Uh, you know, from there we go on to. Uh, another module that is a ball pump, uh, and this is a more classic ball pump with a big chunky piece of plastic moving around and pushing the balls up. Um, and I'm pretty sure this one had some problems today. I'm not really sure what the deal was. There was a lot of activity in this corner today. <laughs> A lot of maintenance going on. <laughs> maintenance, module swapping. It, it was all sorts of things going on here today. Um, and the, the mechanisms, you can't really see that much of it, but the fact that this big chunky piece is sliding back and forth is the actual pump. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not pumping right now, but there we go. And it looks like this one is a Minecraft theme. Yes, it is. And actually, this is um, uh, d the son of a GBC builder who's now a GBC builder. Um, the, his dad 
uh, brought modules to Brickworld Chicago last year. I believe it's the first time he made modules. And when he showed up, his module was, you know, needed some work, and he spent hours in the corner getting it to work, and he did, and it ran fine the whole show. And it was the the roller coaster one over here, the colorful roller coaster. Uh, and now he got his son sucked into making modules too. So the two of them, uh, I think they, they're both into it now. They both spent the day here and had a blast. So, uh, and again, it's a themed, decorated, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. From there, we go into a series of uh, la uh, the first year Brick World modules. Uh, which is just a simple conveyor. Uh, we got a whole bunch of them. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and this is this is a module that was built in Brick Fair, Alabama. At Brick Fair, Alabama, it was a guy who um, wanted to do GBC. He had some GBC progress at home, but didn't have anything working. And uh, he came to the show, and I challenged him to build a module on the spot, and gave him access to all my parts. And this is what he came up with, and it works. And it worked just working fine what it's it's a simple conveyor direct drive runs really too fast but it works so can't complain <laughs> um so yeah this was he sat down in several hours done <laughs> <laughs> that's great so, so that is possible uh this is uh, a module that's also run by a uh nxt although you wouldn't know it until you take the cover off um and he uses a sensor to a button up here to tell when the thing, this carousel is at the top, so that it you know knows when to stop and turn around. Uh, and it basically just is an elevator for balls. It just goes up and down and up and down. Um, from there, we move into uh, the a stepper module, which is basically a dual stepper module. So it's got two. Well, I'll run it real slow here so you can see. It's got two sets of steppers. Uh, so the balls can go up two different sides. Um, and that brings the balls to our gateway, which is a very big, simple conveyor that goes up and up and up and allows the balls to roll across a doorway so we don't have to crawl under tables or anything silly like that. And then down a big spiral on the other side. And back to where we started. So this was an interesting way of doing things this time. I think, um, you know, I, I hope uh, the viewers get something out of the way we did this and that they get to see some mechanisms not moving and, you know, the bottoms of things and inside of a few things. And I hope uh, it's useful to anybody who's looking at this. Yeah, I think it was really good. Thanks for taking us through the whole thing like this. I, I, yeah, I think it was really cool to see, you know, kind of some more of the details on, you know, the bottom of it and how the gears and everything works in some of the modules. So that's really neat. It's hard to do that when you've got balls going through the whole, the whole thing the whole time. It's hard, it's hard to pick a module up and show you the bottom of it while it's <laughs> in the middle of, you know, running balls through it. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this works. We'll see what uh, kind of feedback we get. And, uh, you know, maybe we need to do this every once in a while again. Yeah, I agree. And so if, if for anyone who might have watched this video and thinks that they'd be interested in building a GBC module, is there where, where would you direct them as the best place to get started for that? Well, we're still trying to get this website uh, a little more active, but um, greatballcontraption.com. It's a wiki. It has a forum. Uh, and it, the activities on it is kind of low right now. Uh, but what we were hoping people would do is kind of start to use it as a central place. Uh, I know there's there's a lot of scattered resources out there, uh, and at a minimum, what we're hoping that greatballcontraption.com does is give us a, a place where you can go to jump to places or instructions or whatever. Um, ultimately, uh, the forum and discussion of creating GBC lug as a international lug that uh, specializes in GBC. Uh, and, and discussions, questions. There, there have been a couple of, you know, newbies who went on and asked some questions and got answers. Um, so that would be the primary place I would point people to. Beyond that, you know, do a search on YouTube, and there is a lot of videos out there. The one thing I should warn you of is there are a lot of videos of 
what people call a great ball contraption that don't meet the standard. So be aware of the standard and be aware that not everybody builds to it. So um, the standard is very important if you're going to go uh, to a convention and want to interoperate with other people. Um, that's how we make this work. If people show up and with their modules don't meet the standard, that's the first thing I point out to them. Uh, and sometimes we can make it work, and sometimes, sorry, you, you just, we can't. Your module's too tall, too skinny, too slow. Uh, but uh, for the most part, we try to make it work. Um, but meeting the standards is important, it really is. And, and, and more and more so as we get more and more modules. And uh, we were at 67 or so modules here right now, um, which for India is definitely a record. Uh, and, you know... It's only going to get bigger. <laughs> so, standards important. <laughs>